She calls him the, the God, the Lord God who sees. And she acknowledges with her mouth and believes and obeys and she goes back. It's very, very possible that Hagar is in heaven. She was saved. This is the very first place that Jesus shows up. Now, we talked about the fact that he was a type of shadow in Melchizedek. But without a doubt, this is definitely Jesus. This is a theophany of Jesus, the second person. Have you all dealt with theophanies? you know what I'm talking about? The angel of the Lord. Have you ever studied the angel of the Lord? No? Oh. See, I got a personal talk from God. And he said, Exodus 23, 10, he said, The angel of the Lord will go before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the promised land. Obey his, you must obey his voice for my name is in him. And from that day, whew, things have happened in my life. So the angel of the Lord, well, I'll explain it to you. I, I just wanted to know if you've ever heard it because I didn't want to repeat it. Okay, so she acknowledges him as Lord. Um, well, this is the first place that Jesus the theophany of Jesus shows up that we know for sure. Um, now, who does he show up to? Think about this. She's a fugitive. No, she, Hagar. It's the first place that he, we know Jesus himself. This is Jesus. He's showing up to a fugitive, a runaway. I think that's cool. Because remember I talked about first mention? Mm -hmm. The first mention is that Jesus first shows up to a runaway, a fugitive, slave. I think that's cool. There's a, there's a deep meaning there. There's a hidden treasure. <laughs> now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but rabbis morning prayers, they would pray, Lord, I thank you for not making me, number one, a Gentile, and number two, a woman. Because they were both considered dogs. And they considered Gentiles to be fuel for the fire, for hell's fire. <laughs> so they would pray that every, every morning. Well, the good shepherd always leaves the 99 and goes after the one, right? The angel of the Lord is Jesus because he says, I will. I will greatly multiply. Um, and Ishmael has 12 sons. Did y'all know that? Just like uh, uh, Isaac and Abram, Abraham, I mean, I'm sorry. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob has 12 sons. Ishmael has 12 sons too. And I'm going to show you all of that. That's, that's the crux of my message tonight. To show you what happens there. But the angel of Yahweh. I'm going to give you all these verses. Because I want you all really to study this. This is something that I just found fascinating. There are places where the Bible says angel. But there are places where the Bible says angel of the Lord. And there are angels. Let me tell you one really big hint. To know that it's not an angel. Because he receives worship. Angels do not receive worship. So you know something greater than an angel is there in these verses. You can see these verses. He's identified with Yahweh. Yet he's distinct from Yahweh in those verses. And he may refer to like a theophany. That's what they call things when they want some fancy word for something. Of the pre-incarnate Christ. This is Christ before he died, before he comes as a child and, and is uh, dies on the cross. So look at these verses. Do a study on it. Do a study on it. Okay. Angel of the Lord, what they do is they put malach, which means angel. That's that's just a regular angel. Okay. Malach is a, is a messenger. Any kind of messenger. It's usually a human messenger. And then angelos is another name for messenger, and that's Greek. Okay. But what they're doing here is they're putting malach Yahweh which means angel of the Lord or angel of Yahweh. This is a different kind of angel. Okay, um, The angel of the Lord or of God or of his presence. There are several ways that they, they talk about it in the Bible. I've seen angel of his presence. I've seen, it depends on which version you have, but there are even in the same version, there are different interpretations of it. The angel of the Lord, angel of his presence. So look for those things. But they readily identify with the Lord God in other passages. But it is obvious that the angel of the Lord is a distinct person in himself from God the Father. Um, Zechariah 1, 12, and 13. Nor does the angel of the Lord appear again after Christ came in human form. There's no angel of the Lord after Jesus dies on the cross. So that's very interesting. Consequently, the angel of the Lord came to Joshua right before they go in Jericho. That's the angel of the Lord. 
and he bows down and worships him. When he's announcing um, Samson's birth, they bow down and they worship him. And angels do not receive worship. So this is a very special angel. Um, one of the three-in-one Godhead. The angel of the Lord is the visible Lord God of the Old Testament as Jesus Christ is of the New Testament. Thus his deity is clearly portrayed in the Old Testament. Um, the Cambridge Bible says there's a fascinating forecast of the coming Messiah breaking through the dimness with amazing consistency at intervals from Genesis to Malachi. You got Abraham, you got Moses, the slave girl Hagar, the impoverished farmer Gideon, even the humble parents of Samson had seen and talked with him centuries before the herald angels proclaimed his birth in Bethlehem. So look it up. It's very interesting. Genesis 16, 12 through 13. God himself even prophesies what's gonna, what Ishmael is going to be like. He says, He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone. And everyone's hand will be against him. And he will live to the east of his brothers. Remember what I told y'all about the east? Beware of the east. Danger comes from the east. Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are God who sees. For she said, Have I even remained alive here after seeing him? Notice, guys, she isn't looking for him. But he's looking for her. Isn't that just like Jesus? And then she also gives him a new name. That's another interesting thing to go through the Bible and see the names of God. I've studied that before. And this is El Roy, which is the God who sees. Hagar knows this angel is God. I mean, she knows it because she said, you are the God who sees. Well, wild man means para, which is wild ass. And it also is pananim, which means in the face of. Those are the Hebrew words for it. He is against even his own brothers. We're not just talking about Israel. We're talking about even his own brothers. They don't get along. They have a legacy of hate from the beginning. Unforgiveness, jealousy, and nothing. No person on this earth is going to rise to power and bring peace. Because <laughs> God himself put a dividing line between these two. Genesis 16, 14 through 17. Therefore the well was called Beer Lahalaroi. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram called the name of his son, whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to him. Well, did you know that Beer Lahe Roy is the well? It means the vision of life. The same well in Genesis 24 where Eliezer is going to find Rebekah for Isaac. Because Isaac is going to have a wife. And it's the same well. Um, we will find out that Abram will be 100 years old when Isaac is born. Well, Ishmael is the flesh and Isaac is the spirit. And so my question to you is which one will you feed? Ishmael will fight against God in his kingdom. And God allows it. Remember I told you there's two seeds? you got the flesh and the spirit. depends on which one you feed. I'm going to break that down for you all tonight. <laughs> Abraham, 430 years before the law, promises preceded the law, cannot be disannulled. And Ishmael versus Isaac, two sons of two principles, flesh and spirit. Ishmael of the flesh in unbelief. See, the son of the bondwoman will not be heir. You cannot have um, Ishmael receiving the promises of God. Isaac of the promise in response to faith. The ultimate triumph of faith is the offering of Isaac. And we're going to get to that when we get to um, Genesis 21. I'll break this down for you. Romans 9, 7 through 10. Nor are they all children because they are Abraham's descendants. But through Isaac, your descendants will be named. This is the Jewish people. That is, it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are regarded as descendants. For this is the word of promise. At this time I will come, and Sarah shall have a son. And again, they, it happens when they're 99. They're told that they're going to have this, this son the next year. 
and then it happens. And we'll, we'll break that down.